No. Hey, all right, we're on there. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to Dev Tips. My name is Travis. No, it says live now. Okay, I got it out. It, let's start. It says again. live over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when the recording starts. So this is all. This is all part of the recording right now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Uh, my name is Travis, and this is Dev Tips. We actually have a really special uh, video for you today, an unexpected one. I got an email from a from a good good friend of the show, Brian Jones, who's been a friend of the show for a while, and we we've never we never had you on. Say hello, Brian. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Brian. Yeah, so now how is he a friend of the show? Well, um, I, of course, use CodeKit, an application that allows me to have a developer environment really easily set up on my local machine. And I use that when I'm doing a lot of, a lot of the uh, code uh, tutorials that I do. And Brian is the independent developer. He's the creator of CodeKit. And Brian sent me an email and said, hey, Travis, we've done a few things in the past. He's given away some CodeKit um, licenses. I've done some tutorials. Just all because, all because I really appreciate what you do and the way that you do it. And um, when I had a chance to just bring Brian on the show to talk for a little bit, I, I thought that's a really great idea. So we're going to have a special episode right in the middle of the week. Well, thank you very much for uh, for having me. Man, it's it's a delight. Um, I've been following you know CodeKit ever since, uh, even before CodeKit one, before when it was uh, just about um, uh, it was just less, right? A little less app. Yeah, it started out as just an app that processed less files. That's all it did, yeah. How many years has this been? Like five or six years? Oh, man, let's see. I started writing that less.app there. It started as a plug-in for Coda. And then you know everybody was like, hey, I don't use Coda. I, I use this other thing. Can I, can I get a plug-in for that? So I wrote uh, that app. And let's see, that started back in uh, 2008. Yeah, it predates Node and, and all the other stuff that's come since then. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a while, yeah. And it looks like it's been working out for you. You're able to s sustain yourself as an independent developer. Um, uh, so far, yeah, I've been been very lucky. I have really great customers that uh, that let me not have a real job. <laughs> I like the I like the way you think about it. <laughs> um, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you went down to California for uh, like an internship or like a summer kind of. Yeah, really? so I uh, I actually I grew up on the East Coast and then mm -hmm. moved out here for for grad school. I came out to get my MBA, and yeah. uh, I was going to be a, a kind of a consultant, really. You know, one of the the I don't know how much profanity is allowed on the show, but one of those douchebags you see <laughs> running around in suits and ties and you know like the yuppies. I was going right. to do that, which is you know just a tragic life choice. Okay. And uh, then on nights and weekends, I started teaching myself to code and and you know built CodeKit. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of doing an internship, and got yelled at by like all of my professors and advisors and stuff, and uh, yeah, managed to turn that into a job. So I got again very lucky. Yeah, that, I think that's a really great success story in that somebody can you know find a way through all of these options that are out there and find a way to make themselves viable in a pretty crowded and pretty saturated market. Oh, heck yeah. Um, I, I'm a really big believer that at no other time in history have you really had all of the uh, options and, and abilities that you do right now that, that tech provides, right? If you're willing to sit down and just learn you know, how to code or develop things, uh, you know, there, there's no end to what you can do. Uh, and think about the guys, you know, like 100 years ago, uh, if you wanted to, to make your own way in the world, you, you pretty much had to be like a Rockefeller or a, you know, a, a what have you, or have some access to capital, right? And now all you need is a is a crappy hundred dollar notebook and uh, you know iTunes U, which is all free. That's that's really cool. <laughs> um, that, I really love that. I love that ethic, that approach to things. Uh, so let's talk about what you're doing lately. Um, you emailed me because you just recently launched CodeKit three. Yeah, yeah, a whole new version of the app. Yeah, yeah. So um, like I said, we've used CodeKit on the channel dozens and dozens of times. Uh, most of the demos that I do are using CodeKit. Um, and there's also specific videos on the channel about CodeKit. So you guys watching at home, if you're curious, like what, what exactly are they talking about? Go, go check out those videos that are about CodeKit specifically. But let's talk about the update. What are the big changes? What's the big release about? Yeah, so um, for a long time, you know, web development was kind of done on a, on a very simple basis. You had a folder and you had some files in it and then you would modify those files. You know, you would write your CSS and your HTML and you would upload it to a web server. And then stuff like SAS came along, you know, and, and when you start using just one of those things, you know, you, you might just put your SAS file next to your CSS file 
in the same you know subdirectory of your site. And then when you go to upload, you just tell your FTP client, hey, ignore the SAS files. All I need are the CSS files, right? Well, over time, that's gotten more and more complicated, right? Because now we have like JavaScript that combines with CoffeeScript and you got 80 files that get merged into one. You mm -hmm. got Bower components everywhere. So you got all this stuff. And so what's evolved kind of over the last few years has been uh, the idea of building a website the way that you would build like an application, like CodeKit itself, right? You take your source files, you process them all into a separate folder, and then that's all nice and clean so you can upload it to the web. Mm -hmm. And the major feature of 3.0 is uh, first-class support for that whole uh, modern workflow. And by that, I mean you can take a project that you've been using for years without a build folder, check one box in CodeKit 3, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden everything will just compile the way it should with the right output paths to a build folder that's nice and clean, and then you just upload that in, uh, in an FTP client or deploy it however you know, you're know you going to deploy your site. Um, so the whole build process uh, is, is the major new feature of 3.0, uh, aside from you know, lots of stuff like uh, little additions, ESLint, Babel for transpiling, writing future JavaScript today. Terrible freaking idea, but hey, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> And, um, you know, all, all of that stuff is now built in. So it has support for, for modern, you know, more, I guess, advanced kind of web development workflows. Uh, but the, the build process is, is really the big uh, tentpole feature. I noticed when I was looking at the uh, CodeKit 3 website that there is new extensibility built in. So yeah. you're yeah. claiming that any language can be used now in CodeKit if you just add it, basically? Yeah. So the way it works is um, CodeKit, you know, gives you a, a basic set of options for, for every kind of file, right? Where, where does the file go when it gets processed? What's its output path? Mm -hmm. and, and what do you want to do with it? Do you want to just copy it? Do you want to ignore it? You know, uh, you might skip, you know, certain files in your project or do you, should it be processed? And previously, CodeKit only supported the languages that I add to it manually. And now you can go in there and say, hey, uh, I got a file. Its uh, extension is .abc. And when it changes, I want you to process it to this, uh, you know, name it the same thing, but give it the extension X, Y, Z and uh, put it in this folder. And then you just tell CodeKit, all right, how do I process that file? You give it a little script like you would at, at a command line or in a, a grunt file, a mm -hmm. file and say, hey, this is what I want you to do with ABC files when they change. And uh, that's all very nicely baked in there with a nice visual editor and you just copy and paste your, your little script. Um, and usually it's going to be something like, you know, run this command line tool and, and compile ABC files. Uh, so you can do that with all kinds of stuff. Uh, handlebars would be a great example. If you use um, mustache or, you know, templating uh, systems like that, you can now tell CodeKit, hey, when uh, my .hb files change, just process them using this script and, and the, the browser refreshing and everything else just works like it should. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, speaking of custom languages or languages that, you know, you make up ABC, how, uh, are you still supporting kit? Can oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it actually got a, a bunch of new features in, in 3.0. I haven't Mainly seen. because when my designer, I, the guy that builds my website is Guy Meyer. He's fantastic. And he also does the, the visual design of the app and the website and all of that. Mm -hmm. And we were building the website together and he was like, Hey, this is a real pain in the ass. And I was like, man, if only I knew, the guy that handled this language, we could just take <laughs> care of this. So we, we ended up adding like four features to the language just to build the CodeKit website. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And yeah, really Kit, Kit is still uh, very widely supported. And actually, it really surprises me how many people have, have uh, adopted it and used it. You know, I thought, man, this will be a handful of people. But it's actually, you know, I get a pretty wide, uh, wide I mean, just based on my emails, a pretty wide assortment of folks that, that <laughs> use it and like it. Yeah. Really quickly, uh, tell everybody what Kit is and, and what it's for. Just oh, yeah. So uh, Kit is a custom language in CodeKit. And I really, I got to say up front, it's not meant to tie you to the app. It's also open sourced. And uh, there's like a node module that you can install to compile it if you don't want to use my app. But uh, all it does is it adds some special comments and import statements to HTML files. So you just write your HTML file and, you know, say you want to bring in like a nav menu, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you put your nav menu in another HTML file and then you just import it into each, you know, sub HTML file that's, that's part of your website. And you can use variables too. So, you know, you can declare a variable right in your HTML and then use it in, in any subsequent part of your code. Um, and 3.0 has optional variables. They're actually modeled after Swift. 
And uh, basically, they let you very easily do stuff like uh, active states on nav menus based on you know which page you're on. Uh, that's always been kind of a pain, and, and that makes it really simple and easy to do it. Um, so yeah, Kit just adds variables and import statements to uh, to HTML files. That's awesome, and it's really cool that like you updated the language or made it ro more robust just for your own needs. So like it's exactly yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's dog fooded. The whole CodeKit website is just all Kit files. Yeah. Right. So speaking of the CodeKit website, it was um, designed by. Uh, you just said it a few minutes ago. Yeah, uh, Guy Meyer. He's a friend of mine here in San Diego, and uh, really, really great designer and uh, good friend. So uh, he's the one that that builds the actual site. And then I write the content. So if you have issues with my uh, my content, uh, definitely email guy. He loves he loves that. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the what do they call like when you get a quotation like a um, like a customer quote you know or or a, oh, a testimonial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those have always been a treat. So you guys watching at home, go to the CodeKit. Uh, it's CodeKitapp.com, <laughs> right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, my favorite this time around were Siri actually. From uh, Siri, yeah, the quote from Siri. Get it out of her, but uh, turns out she's a big fan of the app. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell me about working with Guy Meyer. Is this the first time you've you've worked with a designer on the design of the app and the website? No. So a uh, guy came on board for CodeKit 2, um, okay. which was back in uh, 2014, although we started working on it in, in I don't know, like 1979. <laughs> uh, it took forever to get it out of the door. Um, but no, working with Guy has uh, has been great. The only problem that we ever have is is Git because we're both kind of Git-tarded and uh, Git for us. We just, there, there are always challenges when we, uh, when we get down to using Git together. Uh, but otherwise, no, um, working with a designer is, is definitely the way to go. If you're out there and, and you're wondering, like, oh, should I hire a designer or do it all on my own? Mm -hmm. um, if you have the, the resources to do it, you know, uh, if it makes sense, definitely hire the designer. It's, it's totally worth it, yeah. Well, that's, a, that's, that's really good advice. Um, I, I've always been impressed with the way that you approach design. I remember reading, like, in a few different places, the way that you um, – look up to Panic, uh, the company yeah. that software yeah. developers, and like you're often talking about like your, your ultimate goal is to try to beat them or something, yeah. like make, yeah. make a better app. What is it about Panic software that you that you admire so much? Um, I The thing that, it, it's hard to quantify really, but it's kind of Panic's whole ethos of software development, right? They, they take this view that um, it should be something that is a magical and, and pleasant uh, experience. And uh, their apps are just, they, they flow really well. They are a, a joy to use. There's all kinds of the, the little things that you discover as you go that make you go, oh man, whoever, whoever did this really knew their stuff, right? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, it, there's a saying that luxury products are a series of small delights, right? Small surprises. And I, I find that in Panic's apps, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's such small details like... Um, uh, I want to I want to configure something so I just I, I drag you know an image or something to to where I want it to drop to and it, it responds right it knows what I'm doing and in CodeKit I've uh, tried as much as I can to do that as well like if you want to set a custom project icon all you got to do is drag an image and drop it where the stupid icon is right and it just <laughs> works but yeah. that that is not you don't get that for free you have to consciously make the choice to to uh, address those little details and things mm -hmm. um and like in in prior versions of CodeKit, it doesn't anymore because uh build folders are a technical nightmare but uh, it used to be that if you renamed an output file in the finder right the app would keep up and just update the output path of of whatever file creates that right you rename your css file it'll mm -hmm. go find your sas file and and say okay this is the new output path Mm -hmm. um, you know, little details like that that, you, you, that just a lot of times you don't even notice them because they, they just make the work so fluid and easy. Um, yeah. That's what I see in, in, in Panic software and, and just the attention to detail um, and that, that really caring about the users and, and, and how their experience is, you know? That's awesome. Um, that's what I try to emulate. Yeah, I mean that that's something that we uh that as designers we look at that kind of stuff all the time. It sounds like you have a very, very um very close eye on the design, um, even though you're working with a professional designer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he definitely wishes I was less opinionated. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. yeah. I mean, it might make the work go faster, but like it, you have a really <laughs> great product. We, uh, we spent literally two months arguing back and forth about the size of checkboxes uh, down to like, should they be one pixel larger in, in mm -hmm. each dimension? Uh, that was a two-month debate. Yeah. For, for <laughs> 
but uh, I won. Yeah, we got larger check boxes. <laughs> but I won. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, during your time as an independent software developer, what is one thing that you've learned that has like kind of surprised you the most? Yeah. Um, God, there are, there are so many, uh, so many things that, that I could go down here with, but you know, uh, the, the thing that surprised me the most, I think about code kit is, um, just the support burden that comes with creating an app like this, right? Because, uh, I become people's first line of defense when, mm -hmm. when anything doesn't work. And, and that, gets down to like, you know, they forget a semicolon in a SAS file and their file doesn't compile. So the very first thing that happens is they email me and tell me my app is broken. So I end up, you know, asking them for their SAS file and then, you know, spending a lot of time debugging and things and saying, oh, yeah, actually the problem isn't the app. This is, this is what's going on. And uh, the support burden for, uh, for an app when it, when it becomes popular is uh, much higher than I anticipated. Really? You know, so just kind of budgeting the time for that and, and, you know, day to day waking up and, and having tons of emails to reply to, um, which, you know, first world problems, obviously. <laughs> uh, but you know, that can really, it, it almost kind of drains a lot of time, right? Because if I do that, then I'm, uh, that's time that I can't invest in uh, developing the app and making it better. Um, so that, that I think is the thing that I was least prepared for is, you know, just how much kind of frontline support w would be involved. Um, in the app. Yeah. The burden of success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Brian. Um, I really appreciate the time that you spent with us this evening to chat about the work you've been doing. Um, I understand we have some, some code kit licenses you want to share with the community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, we've done this before where we've raffled off a few licenses through dev tips and I'd like to do it again. Uh, yeah. so I'd like to give away five and, uh, I think you're going to, you're going to put a link somewhere down there that that'll, uh, yeah, we'll have a link in the video description, and um, it's just going to be a you know sign up there, and, and then we'll 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 pick five at random and send you guys yep. a, a license. Yep. All right. Um, thanks again for your time. Uh, thanks for making CodeKit. It's been a big uh, help for me in my in my development career. It honestly has. Oh well, thank you very much. I'm I'm <laughs> glad the app works. Come back for uh, CodeKit Four. We're going to raffle off a Tesla. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, good night. Good night, guys.